Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome you all for the afternoon session on calligraphy. So I'm very happy to introduce our uh, speaker and artist for the day, architect uh, Faiza Shakir. Uh, she was born and brought up in the Kingdom of uh, Saudi Arabia and completed her undergraduate at the uh, Miyasi Academy of Architecture. She's a passionate hand lettering, calligraphy, typography, illustrations, and mandala artist. Also the co-founder of Lens and Ink, uh, which creates a platform for both photographers and artists. So architecture has helped her translate her childhood hobby into an addictive passion. And I'm also so proud to mention that she was my junior in college and I'm so happy to welcome her. Over to you, Faiza, for the fun full session on calligraphy. Thank you so much. This is such a nice introduction. And it's so nice to see you also after so long. Hi, everybody. I uh, hope everyone's doing good. This is my first online workshop, so I'm pretty uh, excited. Um, so let's get straight into the session, right? So um, calligraphy is an art where uh, you design and execute letters in a way that it looks extremely aesthetic and attractive. So um, you guys have just joined basic design, like uh, I mean, first years right now. So when you get into basic design, you guys will learn how important a line is. Like a line formation starts with just one point. Like all of your design, everything revolves around one point, points become lines and those lines together form a plane, volume, so on and so forth. So uh, when you're trying to put all these lines together, each line will have its own, um, what do you say, a value. Like you have different line value, line type, line frequency. So when you put all of these together, you're able to make these uh, alphabets, so these letters. So when you look at a very thin line, a frail line, it, it indicates sensitivity, it indicates uh, your femininity. When you look at a rough stroke, it shows masculinity, strength, power. So keeping all of these in mind is how um, a lettering, um, you know, hand lettering began in the early on days. When you actually look at it, again, this you will learn in history of architecture later on, that uh, there was a Roman emperor called Charlemagne. So what he did was he was a very, um, let me show you who he was. Hold on. If you can see, he was the Roman emperor who was very interested in uh, Catholicism. So he was the one who uh, brought in Christianity and uh, he used to make these uh, spaces for monks, which were called monasteries. And monks used to sit and put together scriptures for uh, Christians. Now, um, as and when time went on, they were the ones who came up with the Gothic script. So you've seen him. Yeah, so they came up with the Gothic script, which was uh, something that uh, they would write down in scriptures. And as and when time went on, they wanted uh, these monks to sit and copy these uh, scriptures into, like, of course, they didn't have photocopiers back then. So monks used to sit and write everything. And as and when time went on, they wanted uh, things to be more concise, things that did not take as much time. And then came this form of lettering. this kind of a gothic script. Are you able to uh, see this? This is visible, right? Yes, yes, Pfizer. Yeah. So can you see how uh, close the letters have been put down? And they tried their level best to keep this uh, lettering in such a way that they're able to, um, you know, not spend too much time and waste a lot of paper on this. So as and when time went on, they, yeah. But at the same time, they wanted everything to look extremely aesthetic. So then came uh, these natural paints where you can, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, from leaves and flowers and everything. And they, they used to come up with lettering that looked like this. And then they had the unseal font and the Gothic font. Apart from that, apart from this Western calligraphy, Islamic calligraphy also has a big part to play. I mean, Islamic civilization and all that. So you guys would have seen all of these fonts, right? These are extremely aesthetic unseal fonts, which are very round and this takes quite a lot of time to write. So 
so these are the capital letters out here and these over here on the bottom you can see the lowercase letters right so um now that we've seen the historic importance i think we can get straight into how you start writing calligraphy is this visible yes it is right. i'm not able to set the frame hold on a second yeah here so this word that's written out here that is in gothic script calligraphy now in this you have a lot of uh, rules to start with i know it'll look very um, what do you say aesthetic but at the same time there's a lot that you need to learn with it let's get started now the best part in calligraphy is apart from having all these fancy tools that everybody keeps talking about for example like you can see this is an extremely broad tipped pen this called a pilot parallel pen 6 mm thick similarly you have other thicknesses like these right you have 1.5 2.4 3.8 Now, when I started writing calligraphy, I started using pens like these. This is from Rotring. This is an angled nib, right? So, what you do in Gothic calligraphy is you first learn the strokes on how to exactly write. Now, I'm going to use a three point eight mm thickness. so you can see the nib i'm going to draw tiny squares with this 1 2 3 4 now i've put the squares down just exactly where like you can see that they're meeting at these tiny points over here each of this is called a nib width and this all together is called a nib ladder so what you do in gothic script is six of these squares will create one alphabet size of yours now why we do this is every time the uh, nib proportion here should be proportionate to the alphabet that you're going to create now the um one second so say you are like we generally don't do this but just for understanding i'm going to put it down so as you can see this is going to be the height of the alphabet so this right here is called the x height right now any alphabet that comes uh like in this in in this x height you'll be able to fit an alphabets like a i and uh, things that fit within this space but if you have letters with loops that come on top like d f or f has both on top and bottom so this part of the alphabet is an ascender and this on the bottom is descender so this in the middle is the alphabet that will fall under this um space so this is called the x height and in uh, gothic calligraphy like i said this will be six nib widths in italic calligraphy you will have it um as 4 to 6 so it depends on whatever size you want it to be and in gothic calligraphy one of the most important things you need to remember is your nib is supposed to be at a 45 degree angle like so so the easiest thing to do with this pen is you draw a small box right a square box and you just fit your nib from diagonal to diagonal so that is the angle at which your pen needs to be so you know that your stroke is going to come like this you have a tiny tail on the top and bottom
so these are the kind of strokes that fall within the x height now um when you actually write it with the uh, what do you say the capital letters these are for lower case letters this um the six nib width is for lower case letters if you want to add the ascender and descender you will add it as uh, in the ratio of 2 is to 6 is to 2 or 2 is to 5 is to 2 or even 3 is to 5 is to 3 so whatever is the height of your ascender let me put that down for you that's easier to understand this will be wait this will be the ascender this will be the x height and this will be the descender so apart from writing it with a uh, fancy pens like these you can even put together two pencils you you guys can do this uh, as and when i am doing this take a rubber band put both of the pencils together you see that that creates the double line like how the nib is the nib has two edges this has two edges except that of course this is going to be really wide but again you can use this to write let me clear this part off like if i had to write a b one stroke second stroke you see that that's a perfect gothic alphabet now if the same thing i had to write in using a pen let me use a wider one so it's more visible Now notice that as and when I'm writing all of this, my pen is still at a 45 degree angle, the nib. So all of my entire alphabet, see this does look the same, just that because the nib is a little bigger, right? And you can just color this in to get a solid letter, right? now in gothic calligraphy you have various strokes let me start with apart from uh, gothic this is even called the uh, old english lettering or black letter or a uh, big font now let me show you the different strokes that you get after you put your pen in this 45 degree diagonal you will write it Like this. Now this stroke is called the straight stroke. So it is just a straight line. Okay, it's it's not so straight. Hold on. That's a forty-five degrees. That's a straight stroke. So when you actually measure it, this should be at a forty-five degree angle. This here should be forty-five. and this here should be 45 as well so that is how you will know that this nib has been kept at a 45 degree angle so that is your first stroke is straight the second one is diamond so in this alphabet b that i have written you can see that these two are straight strokes this one 
is a straight stroke. This is something like a diamond, but at the same time, it is uh, just for aesthetics. Diamond is something that you just add for its visual, uh, what do you say, for it to just look pretty. So that is another stroke, the diamond. So all you need to do is keep your pen again at the 45 degree angle. A diamond, another diamond. So you got to be really patient and slow when you're writing your uh, strokes. Then this little guy over here is called the slanto. So that's your third stroke. Now, the entire alphabet is a combination of all of these strokes put together. Like, for example, if I need to write an I in black letter, it'll be first the diamond. Then I'm going to draw a straight stroke. And then there will be a diamond again. And you will put the dot on. So when you actually have this as a... If you were able to see through the alphabet, you would have one diamond like that at, again, 45, 45. And then your alphabet would be starting from here, your straight stroke. So that will be that. And then this will be your diamond again. So outside, you see this entire block put together, right? Now, if you... Um, if you had to uh, combine other strokes, like uh, along with the capital letters, this ladder of yours would be 11 niblet. Uh, one second, yeah. This will be 11 niblets for you to write something as a capital alphabet like this B. Now, apart from this, in uh, medieval calligraphy itself, hold on. Right, so right now what we are talking about is medieval calligraphy. I'm going to write it down for you guys to understand. Now, um, yeah, under medieval calligraphy, the first one we've already seen is the black letter or the old English font. People even prefer uh, calling this as fractal calligraphy or even Gothic calligraphy script. The second one is the italics. That is not something that I specifically use a lot, but let me just, um, you know, teach you the basics. Now, like how we put down um, the nib width ladder in the Gothic one S6, in this, it is going to be um, four to six. So either one you can use. And um, hold on. Let me just draw basic guidelines here for you to understand. So like I said before, this over here is going to be your X height. And wherever this, um, what do you say, guideline starts, I mean, over here, this is the baseline. This is the baseline and the top of it will be the waistline. And this on top, like I said, is called the 
sender and this on the bottom is called the descender. Now this is the basic of any calligraphy. Like you need to put these guidelines down to be able to learn how your strokes are going to fall within this, this guideline system. So in italics, uh, italic calligraphy, you will put down letters uh, into groups like one set, the first set of letters is called the straight letters. And this group is I, L, T, F and J. It is because all of them have similar strokes when you write them down here. And one difference between the Gothic calligraphy and Italic calligraphy is that Gothic, we kept our pen at a 45 degree angle, exactly within that. But this one, the pen will be at a 35 degree angle. So it will be a little more slant this way. So when you write an I, okay, this, um, the nib width, the X height is not proportional to the nib width, but I'm just going to write the letter down and show you. If you can see, this one is at an angle, right? That's at an angle. And your pen was at a 35 degree angle. Also, these alphabets are more rounded. If you can see the edges, this is rounded, this is rounded. But in Gothic calligraphy, it is extremely straight. It's either that way or this way. Italics is going to come up a little bit, go down at the 35 degree angle and then a rounded tail again. And you will not shift your pen around to put the dot on the top because it should fall in the straight, same straight line like so within the alphabet. I hope you guys have been able to understand this so far. And in italics, your uh, capital letters will never be this entire thing. You never write it as big as this. So always this um, ratio that you're using here, you will split the ascender into half. If this is half, and you have an extra added line over here. This is where your capital letter is going to start. So this is where your capital letter will be. Okay. So I mostly uh, use Gothic calligraphy and copper plate. So the third one in medieval calligraphy is going to be the copper plate one or the one that you can call as the flourishing calligraphy. So in this, you use flourishes, that is these extra added on, um, what do you say, added on uh, aesthetical elements in your alphabets to make it look pretty. For example, let me show you one piece that I have done. Is the screen visible? Yes, yes, Faisal. Yeah. Okay, so this that you can see on top of Paradise and on the bottom, these extra lines that have come, which are all curvy, that is what is a flourish. So this used to be a copper plate uh, calligraphy, which was very, very intense. But now since uh, modern calligraphy has come into play, people have just started using, uh, like, you know, hold on. See, this is the entire alphabet of Gothic calligraphy. Like you see, the B in this is a little different from the uh, B that Faisal, I wrote. can you stop your screen share? I think uh, then we can see what you're showing. No, no, no showing I'm showing something on the screen, screen share. Okay. Yeah, on the screen, yeah. Okay. Because okay. I'm showing the 
the screen against the one that I wrote. So there is a little bit of a difference because as and when like throughout the years that I've been writing the calligraphy, I've developed it to like a style of my own. So uh, this is the entire uh, Gothic calligraphy set. These, as you the can see, the screen is with the paradise itself. Is that's not that's not really? the image that you yeah no no to... I let me stop and uh, yeah get back again. Is this visible now? Yeah, it's visible now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So as you can see, this is like the eye that I wrote down at the 35 degree angle. This is the entire set of alphabets. I would love to actually write down all the alphabets and show, but every single alphabet is going to take a lot of time. This is the entire set of uh, black letter. Like I said, the B that I wrote down is very different, not very different, but a little different from this because I have developed my own style of writing, writing down the alphabets. Even in this, you have an entire group where um, alphabets like C, O, Q, T all fall under these rounded kind of alphabets like you can see. The C, E, uh, G, O, Q, T, all these are rounded. So everything will be uh, in set of groups so that you're able to learn and understand um, how you can practice your strokes. So this is also uh, italic calligraphy. So this one over here is the copper plate calligraphy that I was talking about. This is the one that has a lot of flourishes. As you can see, it's very, uh, you know, rounded and very feminine and pretty looking. So these are the kind of alphabets that people have started using now for wedding cards and stuff like that. So let's get into uh, modern calligraphy, which everyone gets so excited about these days. Let me stop the screen share. Right. Now, modern calligraphy uh, has bouncy letters, it has regular uh, modern calligraphy letters, and it has something called faux calligraphy. So let me write that down. You have regular, you have bouncy, you have faux calligraphy. Now in regular calligraphy, again, in this, you have a lot of strokes to understand. So the first stroke that you learn in modern calligraphy in the regular one is the up stroke. And one of the uh, basic major principles of this calligraphy is that you, all of your up strokes, that is strokes that start from the bottom and end at the top, they're always light. So you apply very little pressure and the line is going to be very thin. But when you're coming down, that's the second stroke, the down stroke. So when you're coming down, you start from the top and come to the bottom. It's always thicker. So you can see there's a difference between the up stroke and the down stroke because when you go up, it's a thinner, uh, thinner pressure, thinner line. When you come down, it's a thicker pressure, thicker line, heavier line. So what you should do is you should start, um, you should understand all of those strokes first in modern calligraphy, and then you start practicing all of them. So the first stroke is the up stroke. The second one is the down stroke. The third one is called the overtone. In this, you start at the bottom, like how you would go for an upstroke. You start at the bottom, you go up light, curve, and come down. 
thicker. Yeah. Now this, sorry, I forgot to introduce is it's a brush pen. As you can see, the tip is very soft. So when I'm able to, uh, when I'm like writing down, uh, putting down my strokes, I'm able to put a thin, uh, I'm able to put a little pressure. So the line comes thin, but when I'm coming down, it comes nice and thick. So this is a brush pen. So that is the third stroke is an overtone. The fourth stroke is an undertone. Very similar to the overtone, but the only thing is that you are going to start at the top, come down. So this line is going to be thick. And then you have the turn and this goes up as a very thin line. So that is the difference between overtone and undertone. The fifth stroke you have is a compound curve. So what happens is in this is it is like the addition of the overtone and the undertone becomes the compound curve. So you start from the bottom. Go up, come down, turn, and then take this up again. This together becomes a compound curve. So you can make it thick if you want, and then you go up. Now what you do with these strokes is keep practicing again and again and again and again. Why? Because as and when you keep practicing your, your hand, every time you continue to write the alphabet, it will come in the same way as you would want it to again and again. So in this, you can see that these are supposed to be exactly parallel to each other. This and this 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 you cannot write it like this wouldn't be right because it is visually not appealing when you look at a compound curve that is wrong so your alphabets are meant to be uh, the strokes are meant to be parallel to each other now the next stroke that you see is the oval stroke. Now all of these strokes that I'm putting down, everything is keeping in mind the baseline and the waistline. Like how I taught for the Gothic and the italic uh, calligraphy. So all of these also have their baseline and waistline. Just that uh, like the more you Right, the more all uh, these lines just disappear in your head, but it, they're still there. So for oval, let me draw down the lines so it's easier for you to see. Now I've drawn the line, uh, lines three squares away from each other. So in oval, what you do is start right at the center over here. Say your O needs to be somewhere like that okay so this part is not where you start with first the second line here this is where you would start a little away so you go up and you come down and come back up and meet right here so again you can see that this one follows that angle and this one over here starts from the center thin up stroke goes down thick comes back up again has a thin one so that is your oval curve the next stroke that you have seventh one is the ascending loop now we were speaking of the x height the ascender and the descender so say my x height is uh, three squares here. So I will have some space on top, three squares or two squares, whatever you want it. For now, let me just keep it as three squares. 
So this again is my x height. This over here is my ascend. I will write it as a. Now, as you may know, uh, letters like D um, will fall under this category where you have this on the top. So an ascending loop is where you have or come down thick. That is your ascending loop. Again, it follows the same angle in which these other alphabets are and you have this extra loop on the top. Similarly, if the same thing was a descending loop, loop number, uh, I mean stroke number eight is the descending loop. So if I draw down So over here, this is the x height, and this over here is the descending loop. So it is similar to this, just that the thick line is what you're going to start with because that is your downstroke. You come down and you go up. So alphabets like G, J, all of those fall under this category. Again, this similar angle is maintained in the alphabet. And one more thing is this, um, the loop that you start with, like over here, you should never let it come out as, where is my blue? Yeah, you should never let it come out as a tail over here. So you start from this and you, Finish it on top of that. Similarly over here, you start with this and you end here. There's never a tail that comes up. So that would be wrong. This would be wrong. Then the, so yeah, these are all of the strokes for your uh, basic, uh, what do you say? The regular modern calligraphy. Okay, now once you've learned all your strokes, you want to put all of these strokes down together as one alphabet. For example, uh, let me write G. So when you write G, you start with first is your upstroke. I think I'll put down the guidelines for you. This is my X height. And this is my descending uh, loop area. So I will start with, so this is my X height, right? My upstroke will be here. So that's my upstroke. Then I have the second loop, uh, second of, uh, stroke of mine is going to be the oval stroke. So as I said, start in the middle, a little away. So you go up, you bring that down and you come back up again. Then the next one is the ending of the alphabet, which is going to be your descending loop. So you start from top, bring it down, loop it, and bring it up. So this is exaggeratingly very thin. I've done that on purpose, and the alphabet is too big for, for this specific pen. So you can see that this is separate, this is a separate stroke, and this is a separate stroke. So all together, this made one alphabet. Now, the same thing if you want to write it in the, as, as a word. Yeah, let me use this. Say you want to write the word game. Yeah. 
you will start with an upstroke. Is this in frame? Yes. You will start with an upstroke, right? Then you start from the center of this as an oval. Bring it back. Go back there. Come down. You stop here and this again becomes an upstroke because you are joining another alphabet to this because your next letter is A. So if I need to break this alphabet down, it'll be upstroke plus oval plus descending loop is one G. All of this is this. Now, after this, I've added the upstroke again, which would be the upstroke of the A. So there's another upstroke, and then you have another oval, and then you will have a downstroke. So let me write it along over here so you're able to see how it gets joined. I'm sorry. <clears throat> From here, since the next letter is I, I would actually recommend after the, um, what do you say, after the oval, you take an undertone. So the next alphabet, I, comes along with it. So you go up. As well, we have a request from a student to show the ascending loop yes. again. The ascending loop again? Yes. Okay, sure. Here it is. Are you able to see? Yeah, yeah. Let me write it once again to understand better. Start there. Is that understandable? Ritika, I hope your uh, query is cleared. Yeah, she says yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome, no worries. Okay, so coming back to the gain word. So we're done with G. Let me break it down here. This is the first alphabet. Then this is the second alphabet, but at the same time you're taking the curve, the undertone. And then for your I, same thing from here, since you need to bring it down again, you have an opposite of the compound curve. Saw so the compound curve here, right? That's your compound curve. The opposite of that will help you give the I as well as the starting point of the end. So more pressure, get up. So as you can see again, the same angles, right? So this is half of um, N and I. Then again, you end it with another compound curve. So you start from the bottom. Thin line up with less pressure, more pressure, thick line down. And that is your word. Yin. So again, you know that this one is an upstroke. This here is an oval. This is a descending loop. This is an upstroke again. That is an oval once again. This, I'm sorry. <clears throat> this is an undertone. Where is this? Yes, this is an undertone. This is an undertone, opposite of compound curve. And then you have another compound curve. So with all of these different strokes, you put everything together as a word. So first, what you do is you practice all of your strokes, use a grid book like this, 
because this is the easiest you can uh, take how many ever squares you want in this for you to know how, how big you want your letters to be how wide you want your letters to be and uh, also with the strokes you need to remember that all of your letters are supposed to be evenly spaced in the middle so once you're done with practicing all of your basic strokes these uh, eight strokes that you have up stroke down stroke overturn underturn uh, compound curve oval ascending loop descending loop all of these once you practice like you need to practice a lot develop some muscle memory and then you can get into formation of uh, alphabets like separate ones and then you put them together to form words like this i hope everyone has understood this so far okay so what i've taught right now is the regular we've just done the regular uh, strokes now coming to let me go to four calligraphy and then i'll go to the bouncy one four calligraphy uh, right means pick calligraphy that is you will write something um, with a pen like this it's just a regular fountain pen with a point tip you can even do this with a pencil for you to actually get down to calligraphy you really can just start learning with one pencil and uh, you can just take it from there you don't need any fancy tools let me uh, screen share hold on i will show you a calligraphy piece that i had done just with a pencil i'm guessing my internet connection has become really slow okay till this loads i will show you Are you able to see all of this? Yeah, it's visible. These, yeah, these are the traditional uh, basic strokes for brush calligraphy. As you can see, the upstroke is a very thin line because it's less pressure from bottom to top, more pressure from top to bottom for the uh, thicker downstroke, the overtone, the undertone, compound curve, descending loop, descending loop, oval, and yeah, you have reverse oval. So when you see, always um, do your lettering on a grid book or a book like this that has uh, these dotted guidelines. So they're not, if you want to create a nice lettering piece out of it, it'll not be so difficult for you to um, like, like these. I have actually used the dotted book for this. That one over there is bouncy lettering bouncy and it is for calligraphy i'll show you the one with the pencil like this is actual gothic calligraphy it's done with the pilot parallel 6 mm pen i think the screen has not moved uh, faiza it's not moved. We are having a small case lettering. Is that the one you're showing? No, I've been showing my work from the Instagram page. No, no, it's not visible by that stuff. Let me stop more. share and then let me share again. Is it visible now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm, I was showing this piece where this was just at home when I was just sitting and getting bored. So you can see that I've just used the pencil, but you can see the thin upstrokes and the thicker downstrokes. So you can just use a regular pencil to do your calligraphy and you don't need anything extremely fancy to be able to like, you know, execute letters. Uh, over here, I've used a grid book for my lettering. Why is it not going with the 
next one. Even this, this is all on the grid book. So these uh, books you can use for your practice. These are my favorite kind of uh, you know books to write on this grid one and uh, these dot grid ones. Anyway, so let's get to full calligraphy. Uh, stop sharing. Right. Now, full calligraphy is one when you are trying to fake the thicknesses of the, the alphabet that you're writing. Like, say, if I had to just write it with a regular fountain pen. So, I'm just going to have an upstroke. I'm going to have the oval. I'm going to have the descending loop. And then an upstroke again. And then an oval again. So this is how, can you see the difference between the thickness of both the words? This is, again, thin upstrokes, thick downstrokes. Over here, everything is of the same thickness. So you don't know which one goes up and which one goes down. So uh, after you're done practicing your basic strokes and you get an idea of where an alphabet starts from, which stroke needs to go down first, you will be able to do your full calligraphy that is fake the thicknesses. So now, since I've written it with this color, let me take blue, easy for you to see. Now in the oval one, you know that when you start from here, you go up and then from here, you start going down and then you go up again. So technically, this is supposed to be your thin stroke and this is going to be your thick stroke. So you can take the same pen that you are writing the letters with and create a second line there, which meets the first stroke that you've drawn and just color that in. So that looks like you just wrote it with a brush pen. So you don't need, again, another fancy equipment to write stuff down. You can very much do that even with a pencil. Like for example, I'm going to uh, write it just like hand lettering. I'm gonna write a smaller alphabet, is it visible? Just hold on. Mm, what do I write? Let me write um, apple. So I'm going to start. Then up. Down, thin up again, thin up, thick down. So as you can see, this was all done with just pressure of my hand. So you can write anything. Say I'm writing a bat. So I go up again. It's the same loops that I've talked. Goes up, that's an ascending loop. Comes down like that. Then you have like a half Oval, go back up with an upstroke, come down, now as you can see this is not the same as me writing if say I was supposed to write in cursive which is my regular handwriting which say I'm writing apple like this. You can see that I have just written everything in one shot. It can look the same, not look the same. 
So there's a difference between handwriting and hand lettering. In um, when I wrote this with the pencil, Apple and that both, both of them, I stopped my strokes, every single alphabet, and then I continue. But in this, I can just write it the same way. Similarly, even this, this word could just be hand letter, uh, I mean handwritten, and then once you add on the thicknesses, it becomes hand letter. So coming back to folk calligraphy. Should run over that one so it looks like one alphabet. So this is starting to look similar to how we brush lettered it initially. So this is the difference like uh, the regular one is with the brush pens. You can use any different kind of actually if you really want to start practicing there's this this really uh, what do you say economical set of these agile brush pens that have i would have ruined these using them as markers but it has both the broad and fine tip so you guys can actually sit with these like say i'm drawing a thin up stroke and i want to uh, put down the oval so i start thin and i can come down thick and go up thick line down. So you can practice with these. It will really help you before you get into like fancy expensive brush pens. So now we've learned uh, regular um, brush lettering. You have folk calligraphy and we'll move on to the bouncy one. But before I go to that, just want to show you how many different kind of tools you can use for just one brush lettering. So you guys saw the brush uh, pen that I used, this tip. And then you have something called the water brush pen. So you get to fill water in this and this tip, you use it like any regular uh, water color pen in watercolor brush. Let me show you something that I made with the water brush pen. Actually, this is where brush lettering started with, with the water brush pen. I have no idea why my internet connection is this slow. Is my screen visible now? Yes, Faiza. Yeah, if you yeah. can see here, just gonna play this. So I use this water brush tip to just get some color on uh, with my watercolor pencils. More than, um, you know, the tools that you use for hand lettering, you need good paper on which uh, uh, your colors can blend, on which you're easily able to like uh, smoothly write things down without destroying the tools that you're using. So this is the brush pen. So I can easily use this water brush pen as a painting brush also, as well as for the lettering. So all of these pieces, I, I mean, it's really fun to use the water watercolor uh, brush tip. So similarly, you can blend letters. So modern calligraphy, the name of brush lettering anyways, came from using this uh, water brush pen. Okay. So the next one in um, modern calligraphy is the fonts letters. Let me show you how this works. 
Now, um, we've seen so far that there is a particular um, baseline and a particular waistline that you follow for putting down all of your alphabets. So when you've done that, if you can see over here on the bounced area, you can see that the baseline is different for each of the letters. But that is only a visual thing. When you actually write it down, it is uh, the baseline is pretty much followed similar uh, um, like how you write the regular one. Only thing is that your, um, what do you say? The bottom, wait, I'll just show you. It's, it's difficult to just explain it in words. Let me get my paper ready. Right. Stop sharing. I'll come back to that again. Let me put very simple guidelines in pencil. I'm just going to write it with a regular pen for you to just see. Now, say if I had to write the word minimum, because these are the uh, this is a particular word that uh, we generally use for you know teaching and uh, to learn the strokes better. So, as usual, you have the upstroke. So now I've written the word down minimum. So this is my base uh, baseline here. And this is my waistline. So this is my X height. Correct? Now say the same word. I am just going to mark a few areas in this word. Say this. This now these um what do you say these strokes alone I'm going to take a little below the baseline so it looks like it has a little bit of a bounce. I'm gonna write the word again but extend the tail down. I took it below the baseline. Took it below the baseline, below the baseline again, below the baseline again. So you can see that these here are the bounces. Now, same thing. This same word, if I wanted to add a little more of a bounce, this is just the basic bounce. So if I wanted to look a little more exaggerated, I will bounce these extra areas. I mean, you can do it even on the end, but I feel it looks better only if you do the M's in this word. Draw the guidelines again. So now your waistline starts here, your baseline is here. Yeah. So I'm going to write the letter, I mean the, uh, the word with the extended bounces on the bottom as well as on the top of the alphabets. So notice this goes up, this goes down, go back up. Goes down, goes back up. The M gets extended above and below. Okay. 
extends above and below. So if you can see, this is a pretty exaggerated minimum than from how you started. So if you look at that, that is your regular hand lettering. If I had done it along with the thin and thick strokes, it would have been my brush lettering. And then this is the first series of bounces. And then this is the second series of bounces. If you didn't have the guidelines also, you would be able to notice that it is able to, uh, I mean, it's you're able to see the bounces both on top and bottom. So again, going back to what I showed you, uh, there you go. Now you see this again, you'll be able to uh, like, you know, notice it even better that these letters look a little more uh, like they're dancing than this. But the principles of all of the lettering is the same. Use the baseline, use the waistline, use the correct strokes of yours, and then you decide to uh, bounce whichever letter. Now, there, there are a few mistakes that people may make in this because you think it's bouncy, so you just write however, but you need to understand that this of yours, the X height should remain the same or it starts looking very unruly. There's no such rule, but visually it does not look good. So yes, um, I think that brings us to the end of modern calligraphy. Mm, let me look if we have something else to... You guys can go through my Instagram handle and you can ask me any doubts from what uh, I have taught you now or any anything at all. Anyway, with this, I, I just want to say that Again, don't bother which tool you use, what kind of paper you use is a little more important. Practice your strokes regularly to, uh, you know, uh, get your muscle memory. And then you need to always remember that when you go upwards, it's a thin upstroke. Every time you come downwards, it's a thicker, heavier downstroke. And the spacing of your letters is very important. And every time you practice something on a sheet, make sure that you're putting down the date of each work. That will be uh, much easier for you to work with. And then as and when you've done all of your, uh, you know, practicing and all that, you can easily combine your hand lettering uh, and your handwriting to give it a more personal uh, feel. Like, so I guess I am done for, um, I mean, with the with the rules and guides and everything. If anybody has any question, you can ask. Is anybody there? Students, you can come forward and ask your questions, or you can even put it in the chat box. I've shared uh, Faza's uh, Insta handle with you all in the official group. You can mm. take a look at that as well. You can go through the website as well. There's a lot of uh, activities that keep happening on the website. We keep having contests every month. So people can join if they want. Come on, nobody has any doubt. No, now the questions are coming up. You can see the chat box, uh, Faiza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you have control over your brush pen, ma'am? How do you implement calligraphy like this in your work? Okay, how do you have control over your brush pen? As I said, learn your strokes. You need to hold your pen, the brush pen, in a way that you have enough control over this. And when you are writing it down, make sure that, again, very thin pressure upwards and thicker pressure downwards. So when you're actually practicing it with your pen, you will be able to get more control the practice. It's just you just have to be practicing. 
like how would you learn your uh, architectural font like it's it's almost the same how do you implement calligraphy like this in your work trust me from school time i started learning calligraphy because of my sister and since i was living in saudi over there everything was like you know uh, arabic calligraphy was like big so it was like a big cultural uh, influence that i had and in school itself everybody used to keep dragging me to write like um, you know names on envelopes like invitation cards and on everybody's certificates i used to eighth grade onwards i was just sitting in my sports room writing certificates and these days like even when i was working at uh, sadak for like 3 years even there it was like for writing it down in invitation cards and then uh, what else to just i don't know look make your stuff look pretty book covers stuff like that you please show us the gothic style alphabets how to handle pencil for gothic style okay i can show that to you guys once again mm, let me turn the camera around you have two pencils yeah take a one put it a little close like that leave some space for you to hold the pencil i generally tend to hold it closer to the nib so hold both of them like this and put good amount of pressure here so it rests on the middle finger i'm sorry this is just for right handed people i do not know how left handed people do this again keep it at your like i said 45 degrees keep the pencil like that hold both of them such that both the leads of the pencil are straight on the paper wait i did here instead 45 degrees bring it down bring it down and then with one pencil just connect these strokes one pencil connect these strokes use this kind of a grid so you know the length of what you're doing again connect these strokes sorry my pencil is moved so when you do that that you get the strokes and then once you become flamboyant with your strokes you can just add on however you want it to look like to make it look pretty so that will be your letter again since i've kept this at kept both the pencils like this at an angle it's going to give me this edge is going to be 45 this is going to be 45 degrees this is going to be 45 this end is going to be 45 this is going to be 45 all of these are going to be 45 so is is that easier darshini oh pencil was divya i'm sorry your work is so organized thank you so much now which calligraphy pen do you use um i used to use the rotring um the rotring company from germany uh, which is 1.1 but as and when i saw, this pen is actually something that you buy for 1500 1600 1, rupees or something but if you just leave it without using this will the nib will get spoiled so you might as well go for pilot parallel pens but this is later on please do not jump on your parents to give you uh, 6000 in hand to go buy this but this is later on when you've gotten good control of your pens so these are the pilot parallel pens that i use for my calligraphy work initially when i started i remember using something like a brand on amazon called skylark or something um which was very very cheap like it was some five saudi real so it would be like say 60 70 rupees one pen and you get five six extra nibs with five extra cartridges so that pen is like really inexpensive and that was what i used throughout school to keep practicing calligraphy so that's 
what type of pens i can use as a beginner uh vivekta that's that's what i just said you guys can actually get in touch with me i don't have a problem sharing links with you the pens on amazon that i used to use so i can share that with you guys any other doubts anything else guys so you guys have understood the basics of what is hand lettering what is calligraphy how um don't ever tell a lettering artist that your handwriting is so pretty i i bet that is why your hand lettering is pretty even if your handwriting looks like crow's feet walking around after being dipped in paint it's okay you can still this is more like drawing your letters it's you've joined architecture so come on you cannot say that you don't draw well so i bet you can do well if you just practice your strokes and you don't have to say my handwriting sucks i can't do hand lettering you can you of course can i'm telling you pencil is all you need a grid book 60 rupees is all you need just start like practicing your pressure with the pencil with thin up strokes and thick down strokes and once you get it uh, get a hold of it on your pencil start with a very cheap brush pen like the ones that i showed you this add gel set you can try with these and then once you get those strokes right move on to your um, getting an actual even this that i have is a uniball brush pen that i got in a set of fine liners that i bought this one is from this this fine liner set so this entire set turned uh, i mean might be a little more expensive but you probably can get the separate pen otherwise also there was this set i just got at some chinese store works well for me again has these these tips so you don't need expensive stuff it doesn't matter if you use these brush pens and ruin the nib just to practice your up strokes and down strokes but don't pester your parents to get expensive pens for you before you have gotten down your strokes correctly anything else i don't yes. see any more questions as of here yeah neither do i okay so do you think that they can try out some simple activity and probably share it later on with you do you want do you like yes, to try something yes i i would like them to i think the best thing they can do is actually try their name just um okay. i can i can leave the um the gothic calligraphy uh, alphabets on the screen if they want to screenshot or something and they can try putting the two pencils together and um they can even draw if they don't have a grid book any graph sheet anything they can just draw down on the grid so to just try writing their name in the gothic letters so will that be okay like they can try writing their own name so they're proud of it and nobody copies from each other ha uh -huh. i think that should be fine you can just screen share that so they can take a screenshot of it let let me just go or you can also share it with me i can post it in the whatsapp uh, group as well so they can yeah i i think that will be uh, better for them right yeah oh. modern lettering also i think if they wish to they could just probably try that seems to be okay so someone wants the gothic letters on the screen let me just okay this is this is Mm. and then you can also ask the students to showcase if they want to just uh, you know get some inputs yeah students if you've tried something and you would like to showcase right now and probably clarify anything you can do that as do well that you can follow the speaker on her handle also yeah i've shared her insta handle you can look at that and see what it's what is done probably even ask questions based on that so we like all of you to try whatever you learn now no it's okay you can just try with pencils like what she said and probably show us that will be really interesting uh we have another question ma'am could you repeat the three old types of calligraphy at the beginning of the presentation yes sure 
it's a uh, the medieval medieval calligraphy right i will show it as well just a second is my screen uh, visible yes yes hi sir so the medieval calligraphy you have uh, the gothic font or the black letter or old english you have like quite a few names for that one and then you have uh, the unseal font the one that i had shown um which charlemagne used to use for the uh, monks to write down and copy catholic scriptures and then you have italics italics was this i that i was showing down here italics and then you have copper plate or flourish calligraphy the one with the extra additional fancy curvy lines so is that all right ashwin i hope that answers your question uh yes ma'am uh the it's the gothic right and then the italics was the third one could you just yeah. show up um uh could you just spell out the name of the second one i didn't understand it very well the second type oh, of the second one as in the unseal one the yes the yes rounded please. letters yeah that's u n okay c i a l thank you thank no problem at all If any of you have tried something along, you could probably share. Or if anyone is already is into calligraphy and would like to share your work, you're welcome to take the screen now. Anyone? I notice a lot of you are busy trying along with uh, Faiza. So if, if you could show. <laughs> Nice. No, I'd really <laughs> like to see. I, I mean, I'd love to see. This is the. I mean, I've never done an online session before, so I'm like, I would really like to know if people are actually listening, or they slept off, or they got bored with what oh, I'm no. talking We, about. I could see them actually trying. A lot of people looking down and looked like they were actually trying out. So that is why I'm curious to see if <laughs> someone has uh, tried anything. So that you can just hold it. your hold your book across the, uh, you know, show the page that you're working on. whatever state it is doesn't matter doesn't matter yeah yeah show it across to the uh, with uh, camera so that we can yeah, just see what you guys are on if you if you are feeling embarrassed about what you're writing these are shitty practice sheets that that i have i mean i found one everything else is back home in india so i'm showing you something that i am not very proud of so you can show me your work that's not a problem Come on, all that you can show, whatever you have, you were all busy writing down something or trying to practice it, right? You just <laughs> show it on screen. Students, this is the first review that you're going to have. Or I'm going to call out names. Yeah, and this is going to continue for the next five years. So, um, yes, yes, Sonal, yeah. Uh, yeah. Faisal, can you show it? Show it, show it, show it. Yeah, I can, I can see. Sonal, uh, oh, unmute Sonal. your mic and talk so that your screen is up. I oh, know I just tried in some different Good 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 just show just show it to the speaker That's that's really nice um your it's gone off again Sonal can you I'll just shall I just pin her screen or maybe Yeah do yeah, a, do a spotlight on the student yeah. yeah can you see it now Can you see her video now No um, Not okay No. no i can it's disappeared yeah i can can you see this yeah, i can yeah. see sonal's up there small yeah good work sonal yes yes bermuda that's nice that's really nice Thank anyone you. else so what you have done is is more like a, a typography thing um like calligraphy is more uh, with all these rules and everything so once you've gotten all of your letters and alphabets and words down together you compose all of those words to make it like you know words have the impact 
with not just reading but also the visual impact the visual feel so what you have done is more of the typography illustration kind which is really nice anyone else hey ma'am i just wrote my name one um, second nirupama somebody else is there am i audible yes yeah. i'll just put you on spotlight yeah yes darshni yeah. I will be going along with uh, ma'am, but it's just wrong. Wow! Great. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. That's really nice for like the first try. Uh, but yeah, that's very good. You should. Oh, that's that's nice. So what what did you use for this? Uh, the one which ma'am uh, Nirupama told us to get the uh, outline one. Okay. But, but yeah, you can use those markers there. It's really good work. Very nice. Very impressive. Anybody else? Uh, I just I'll for the first. Yeah, just a second. Uh, yeah, I just. Hey, nice. Uh, nah, I need. I think uh, I need a more practice of that. The, the minimum that you've written on the bottom most, the bouncy one, that is almost spot on. Thank you. It's very good. You guys should. You guys should really practice. Like, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do a very good job. Hello, ma. Anybody else is trying to show? No. Yeah, at the end Any of the time? day, you can always post it in the uh, group. You can try some more. See, somebody and, else is yes, trying yes. to show Shreya. Yeah. Yes. Haha, <laughs> a BTS fan. Okay. That's nice. Okay. That's really nice. You put in your own style into it. Yeah. <laughs> I love what you've done. Anybody else? Where are the boys? Shreya, yeah, you can mute yourself. I think there's a disturbance because of yeah. I I want to see what the boys have been doing. Yeah, come on. We'll pick out someone who is questioning a lot. Ashwin, you are asking a lot <laughs> of questions. Ashwin James, you have you tried something? Uh, yeah, ma'am. Uh, I was just doing. I was just doing some things, uh, not as much as the others. No, no problem. I was problem. just doing the gain and. Um, you know, I, was, I was just doing whatever. I tried to go along with what was being done, and then I tried. That, that is uh, good. Yeah, and then um, and then I was taking down notes. Uh, and then, yeah, I was trying to do it with two pens. So, yeah. That's that's nice. Oh, that's good. Nirupam, I would like to show. Ah, oh, yes, ma'am. One second. I can try. Put you on spotlight. <laughs> uh, where are you? Oh, yeah, once again. Yeah. Yes. Is that visible? Yes, no? ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma it is. Yes, ma'am. Not me. Faisal, this is a professor, a senior professor. Oh, no, my daughter Institute. tried. Oh, your daughter tried. Okay. Wow, oh, that's really good. She is in ninth standard. <laughs> Perfect nice. age to start. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Ma'am, you can ask Danya to come on screen. Ah, Danya, come quickly. Say hi. Hi. And thank God, she's a teacher of God. Thank you. Hi. 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 Hey, no problem at all. It's my pleasure. You've done a very good job. Thank you, ma'am. Keep practicing. Don't let go of this. You've done a very good job. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> She's so shy. <laughs> you have beautiful hair, man. Such long hair. Uh, actually, uh, uh, it has become very. Uh, she's having that half fall problem now. The length is fine, but uh, the. Somebody else wants to show. Guys, don't feel shy. 
Hey, my daughter also done. I want to show. Yeah, I'll, I'll just put you on the spot. <laughs> Competition, na. <laughs> <laughs> lift, lift it. Lift it a bit up. Uh, Try it a bit no, more. No, have a little up. more up. Ah, uh, yes. So she's yeah. so she's used the marker pen. Yeah, yeah. She's having all the sets without knowing. She got it. Show the other thing. Love. Okay. That's nice. He's doing How eight. How old is she? Eight. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you all too. Interesting session. <laughs> Thank you. Ma'am, I just tried something. Uh, who is this? Can you tell your name so I can put you on? Vishri. Vishri. One second. Can you just speak again so? Yeah, yeah, I can see the speaker. I like. Yeah. I like the cow on the on the. Light switch. Yeah, super shri. One second, I'll just put you on spot. Yeah. Can I see this? Yes. Lift it a bit. Yeah. Up. Can you lift it up a little bit? Little more. Yes. Are you grabbing? That's it? nice. Stay magical. Very nice. So, how did you uh, write down the calligraphy brush part? Yeah, I just used yeah, art line. It's art line. I think it's one point. Yeah. Yeah, one. So um, now that you're using one, right? You've um, yeah. calligraphy. You've written a little big. So one point, like I taught you, right? Draw down the nib width ladder. So if you draw down like six points with that pen yeah. thickness, so whatever thickness of the nib is there, uh, according to that, you'll get the proportion of the alphabet. So yeah. your your nib would be proportionate to the alphabet that you're writing, and so it'll not look odd or out of place. So the thickness and the thin strokes will all be proportionate to how it's supposed to. Try that out with yeah. the guidelines. That'll be really good. Yeah. Good work. I like that cow. I really like that cow. Thank you. Behind on your wall. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's anybody it. else. That's it. I I I saw only one guy. Where's everybody? What is this? Why is the world being dominated by women? Boys, speak up. No, I think you can pick anybody. To, yeah, you can call out random names. Faiza, you can pick. I let me see. The no first panic. name I'm saying yeah. is Aditya. Aditya Thomas, so. Put him yeah. on spot. Aditya Have you tried something, Aditya? Yeah, but I don't think it's very good. As in, I was just trying out the stroke, so that's okay. No problem. It doesn't have to be good. It's it's there as long as you're trying it. It's there. See, that's that's not bad. That's a pretty good job. The eye of Gothic, you've got that down pretty well, actually. Thank don't you. worry Thank about you. it. You've done yeah. a good job. Thank Keep you. practicing. Yeah. Now let's pick other boys. Let's yeah. pick one or two more boys. Jonathan. He looks quite relaxed in his environment. Let's poke you. Ma'am, I was taking just notes. I didn't try anything. I'll try you it. Didn't try anything. Oh. I was just taking notes. Okay. You can show the notes. What notes were you taking, man? Wow. Um, I have scribbled here. Uh, show it, na. We want to see what you did the whole one and a half hours. <laughs> hmm. I think we should do this for every I'm session, so ma'am. Right? <laughs> so you got you got caught Papa. right handed. Thank you, Faiza. We will make a note of the student, <laughs> and so he is going to be <laughs> yes. <laughs> tomorrow session, you better be alert then. <laughs> he will present his work tomorrow first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Faisal, we can pick one more probably, and then yeah. we can close the session. I Hitesh, I guess. I just had that name on mind. Hitesh Kanan. Yes, ma'am. I just tried gain letter. Yeah. Wait, I'm just searching for you, Hitesh. Yeah. Okay. I'll just put you on spot. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. That I is good. Thank you, ma'am. 
the only thing that you need to do is um, the G, the height of the oval that you've used, it should be, I mean, the rest of the alphabets, the A, the I, the N, all of them should be of the same height as the alphabet that you've, uh, I mean, the oval stroke that you've used in G. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Practice more with a grid book so you're able to put down the width of the alphabets along with the height of it. Oh, okay. yes, ma'am. Of course. Okay. okay, I guess, yeah. We can, I think we've come to the end of the session and it was a great session. Nice to see so many people participating and uh, interacting, including, you know, some of our professors, children. So that's really nice. <laughs> so, so I think we'll ask all of them to try it out at home and probably share it. And I'll in turn share the same with you as well. Uh, Faisal, they can all try their names in whichever style is comfortable for them, either the Gothic or the modern. So we leave it up to the sure. students. So, sure, sure. Thank you so much. It was really nice having you. I'm so Hello. happy to have you here. <laughs> Same. We're happy to be here. It was my pleasure. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you, Geeta ma'am, if I'm not Thank wrong. Thank you. Nice to see you and your Geeta daughter. Geeta ma'am, Narayani ma'am, both are senior professors. Oh. <laughs> Geeta ma'am uh, for, for interior design. There's a course called BDIS. So oh, all yeah. three of them are senior professors here. No, nice no, uh, no I am not a senior professor yet. Okay, I am still under the guidance <laughs> of all my senior professors. Okay, among the others, ma'am, like among the others, all of us are assistants. So. Okay. <laughs> all right. Oh. Faisa, we have something special for you. Just a minute. Harish? That is so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So this is just a token of our gratitude towards your time and energy that you spent for the day. Thank my you so pleasure, much for being pleasure. with I'm us. My pleasure. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. You're most welcome.